Okay. Welcome uh, to you out in Cyberland, again, to Outside the Camp Ministries. I'm Brother Casey and Brother Stacy. We're here to present you the, the Word of God, and we thank you for tuning in. And this Sabbath teaching is Angels and Prophets, Fellow Servants of the Most High. And I was thinking about this as you turn your Bibles to Revelation 22, that I used to try to figure out how, 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 how Jesus could be everywhere and everybody all the time seeing everything. How can be in so many different places at so many different times? And that kind of confused me uh, until, I, until I got a, a better understanding of the Word of God. Because he is sitting down on the right hand of the Father until his enemies be made his footstool. And when he sat down, he, he sat down. And he's on his throne. So, and when I finally <laughs> understood that he doesn't do anything, he orchestrates it. And his angels and his ministers and his prophets and his people, they are the ones who carry it out. Uh, look at Revelation 22, verse 8. But well, today we're going to look at the angels because it's a, it's a, it's a, uh, uh, it's a protocol. But his angels are the ones who carry out his, his instructions. In verse 8, go ahead and read the book of Revelation, chapter 22, beginning at verse 8. And I, John, saw these things and heard them. And when I heard and seen, I fell to worship before the feet of the angel which stood, which showed me these things. So he falls out of the feet of this angel. This is what this angel says. Go ahead. Then say he unto me, See thou do it not, for I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren the prophets, and of them which keep the saying of this book, worship God. He said, we're all one. He said, we all one. Don't, don't fall down at my feet and worship me. We are all fellow servants of the Most High. And I'm going to be a brother of the prophets. See? We all are servants of the Most High. We all have our own responsibilities. Amos chapter 2. Chapter 3. The book of Amos chapter 3. Look at verse 9 when you get there. Begin at verse 9. No, verse 7. Amos chapter 3, begin at verse 7. Go ahead. Surely the Lord God will do nothing. But he revealed his secret unto his servants, the prophets. Yeah. In other words, the Lord's not going to do anything until he revealed it unto his prophets. So, before the prophets get it, the angels get it. And the angels are the ones who reveals it to the prophets. Look at Revelation chapter 1. The book of Revelation, chapter 1. And we'll look at verse 1. Begin at verse 1. Read. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him. Now, the Father gives it to the Son. Go ahead. To show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel who unto his servant John. Yeah. So, he signified it 
gave it to his angel to give to his servant John. And that's the protocol. The father gives it to the son, the son gives it to the angel, and the angel gives it to the servants of God. That's why we call fellow servants. But we never get it directly from the Lord until it goes through the protocol. See? Look at Psalms 103. That's true biblical protocol. Now, I was in, you have you have an organization, and you have organizational protocols. Now, God never called an organization. He called men with ministries. People. He never called out an organization. With organizations, you got layers that you got to go through before you can do the will of God. See, I was in an organization where you had your, 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 your head or your founder, then he had, a, he had somebody over a, a, a camp, and he had your, you had your 12 uh, over, uh, it's 12 up there with his elders, and, and then you had, uh, and, and before you can do something, you had to get it okay from from the from from, from the head, from the twelve elders to to the guy that was over over the camp. Well, you have to okay it. Now wait a minute, and they and then they call that well. That's how that protocol. Yes, it's good for organization, but God doesn't deal like that. He gonna deal directly with his servant through the angel. See, what we understand the angel guides the church. These spirits. He's called the Holy Spirit. But that's another, I'm not going to get into all that right now, but this is biblical protocol. There's nothing else in there. There's no organization in between the angel of the spirit of God and the servant of God. There's no organization there. There's not another man there. There's not another head there. There's one medium between God and man. There's nobody between that. But they set themselves up in that because they call it an organization. But the Lord never called an organization. He called men and he gave them ministries. Now, Psalms 103, verse 20. The book of Psalms, chapter 103, beginning at verse 20. Read, bless the Lord, ye, his angels, that excel in strength, that do his commandments. Oh, no, that do his what? Commandments. Ain't we fellow servants? Yeah. Don't we keep his commandments? The angels got to keep his commandments and have to do them. How come we think we don't have to? Go ahead and read. Hearkening unto the voice of his word. Yes, sir. See, they're hearkening to the voice of the Lord's word. Go ahead. Bless ye the Lord, all ye hosts, ye ministers of here that do his pleasure. That's the it ministers, it's the angels that do the Lord's pleasure. Go ahead. Bless the Lord, all his works and all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Yeah, so they are the ministers of his, of his pleasure. They keep his commandments and they obey his voice. Look at Psalm 104, verse 4. The book of Psalm 104, verse 4. Who maketh his angel spirit, his ministers a flaming fire. Yeah. So they're, they're spirits. His angels are spirits. So his angels are holy. His holy angels. His holy spirits, people. And you have a Holy Spirit that is an angel that people think is God. It's not God. It's the Holy Spirit, man. He does the work of God. We're going to see it. But look at Hebrews chapter 1. But the Lord works through his angels. The book of Hebrews chapter 1. Start in verse 1. Begin at verse 1. God, who has hundred times and divers places, I mean divers matters, speak in time past unto the fathers by the prophets. Yeah, because, but the prophets got it through the angels. We're going to show you that too. But he spoke to in time past by the prophets. Because everybody didn't have the spirit of God. They, 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 weren't, they didn't have access to it. So he spoke to us by the prophets. That's why you read back there. 
He, he won't do one thing until he revealed it to the prophets. Everything that the prophets got, uh, 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 the Lord wanted to bring to pass on this earth, and it's going to bring to pass on is written in the prophets. That's why if you don't understand a lot of the prophets, you are looking at a clock with no hand on it. Because if you want to know what's happening in the end, you've got to go back to the beginning with Moses. Now, who received the lively oracles from the angel that was in that bush, that flaming fire? That's where he got it from. Uh, verse 5. Verse 5 of the book of Hebrews chapter 1. For unto which of the angels said he at any time, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. And again, I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. Yeah, he, see some people say that these angels are, I don't know, some, some doctrine, I think they say the angels are God, or I, I don't know. Uh, they've got so many different doctrines on that earth. I, I can, I'm not even trying to remember it. <laughs> That's how insignificant it is. Go ahead and read verse 6. And again, when he bringeth in the first begotten into the world, he said, and let all the angels of God worship him. Yeah. And he said, let all the angels of God worship him. That's why the angel, when he wanted when to try to worship that angel, he said, don't do it. Because they're a fellow servant. We worship him and the angels worship him too. See? But I want to read something. Go, go back to... Uh, Verse 4 and read. Verse 4. Being no, 3 and 4. Verse 3. Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power when he had by himself purged our sin, set down on the right hand of majesty on high. That's what I'm saying. See, when he purged our sin by himself, he would have sat down on the right hand of majesty on high. Go ahead. Being made so much better than the angels as he has in by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than name. He, he, he inherited that name, Yahshua. That's the Father's name. He came in the Father's name. But he was made better than angels after he was resurrected from the grave. Because when he came, he was in the flesh. We're going to see that. But go now go back down. What verse did we leave off? Let's finish five. Uh, we read verse six, didn't we? Yes. Yeah, verse seven. Verse seven. And of the angels, he said, who maketh his angel spirits and his ministers a flame of fire. But unto the Son, he said, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. Yes, sir. See, the Son is part of the Godhead. See, now, when he went back, he became, that's why Thomas said, O Lord, my God, after he, after he was resurrected, and then all power was given into his hand. When he went back and sat down on the right hand of God. Keep on reading. Verse 8. But unto the Son, he said, I mean, verse 9, Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore, Did we finish with 8 yes. and 9? Read verse 9. Verse 9. Oh, there we are. Yeah. Go ahead. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore, God, even thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellow. How many gods? Two gods. Not three. See, they say the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is the Holy Spirit of God. No, it ain't. It's two. The Holy Spirit is an angel, people. He got a name, too. Go ahead, read. Read, read verse uh, 13. Verse 13. But to which of the angels said he at any time? Sit on my right hand until I make thy enemies thy footstool. Didn't say that to any of the angels, but he said it to the son. Because the son is sitting on the throne. And his enemies are going to be made his footstool. Go ahead and read. Are they not all ministering spirit? Sit forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of the salvation. Yeah. So they're sent forth to be ministers, people. Fellow servants. They, we are on the same team. But we're being guided by the angels. See, when, when, when the Bible talks about when, you, when there's two or three together there in the midst, that's them angels in the midst of you people. Not him. The angels are the ones that make up the heads around man. Hebrews 2, verse 1. 
the book of Hebrews chapter 2, beginning at verse 1. Therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, that at any time we should let them slip. Go ahead. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast stead in every transgression and disobedience, received a just recompense of reward. Oh, wait a minute. Let's back up a minute. For what if the word spoken by who? Angel. The angel. Was steadfast. Was steadfast, unmovable, sure. Because they spoke for the Lord. And every transgression and every disobedience received the just recompense of reward. That's why he sent that angel before him and he said, Obey his voice. For he cannot pardon you. But that's why, that's why they got scattered out from the land. They were disobeying the angels, people. Man. But who sent them was the most high. Ain't that something? It was the angel that was that fire by night and that cloud by day. What you think took him back up to heaven? He was caught up in a cloud as he went back to heaven. Whenever you see a cloud rise, listen, it was carried on the wings of a cloud. They can appear at any time, any way. Different shapes, different forms. What verse we at? Verse 3. Go ahead. How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him? Yes, sir. Go ahead. That was back in the beginning. Go ahead. God also bearing them witness, both with signs and wonders and with dire miracles and gifts of the Holy Spirit, according to his own will. Yeah. The gifts of the Holy Spirit, the gifts of the Spirit was those was those miracles and those signs. They, they, they distributed by the angel, the Holy Spirit, and his will. You can go read 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and see that. See? Go ahead and read. Verse 5. For unto the angels hath he not put in subjection the world to come, whereof we speak. But one in a certain place testify, saying, What is man that thou art mindful of him? Or the son of man that thou visited him? Yeah. He said, what is this man you mind for this man? And who is the son of man that thou visit? He's, not talk, he's talking about man. He's not talking about the son of man. That's a, that's a, that's a small t. And then a capital t. Go ahead. Verse 7. Thou made, made, made him a, made us him a little lower than the angels. Thou crowned him with the glory and honor, and did set him over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet, for in that he put all in subjection under him. He left nothing that is not put under him. But now we see not yet all things put under him. So now we don't see all things put under him. See? I missed the point here. Where's the one where he said, Oh, for unto the angels have he not put in subjection the world to come. Verse 5 where we speak. See, in the age to come, man is going to be in charge. Those who make the first resurrection are going to rule in, in, in the son's kingdom. They're going to be in the, in, in, the, in the place of the angels. Verse 9. Verse 9. But we see Jesus, who was made a little lord in the angels for the suffering of death. Now, he was made a little lord when he came in the flesh. Because he was flesh and not spirit. That's what it's talking about. He came in the flesh. See? Go ahead. Crown with glory and honor that he made by the grace of God should taste the death of every man. But he was, when he was raised from the grave, he was crowned with glory and honor. Now, let's go read verse uh, 14 and read. Verse 14. For as much, then as the children are partakers of the flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is, the devil. Yeah, so just like the children took on flesh and blood, he took it on. He wasn't no God man. You can't kill God. You can't kill no spirit. You understand? He wasn't no deity when he was on the earth. That's why he fled. That's why he got tired. 
That's why he had to sit down. That's why he had to drink water. That's why he had to eat. He was flesh and blood. Flesh and blood. Adam sinned. Flesh and blood sinned. And, 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 and flesh and blood had to be redeemed by flesh and blood. And he found no man to redeem him. So he sent his arm to redeem mankind. The Father sent the Son. But he had to come in the flesh. He didn't start with Mary. He came through what verse we call the next brother? Verse 16 to 17. Did we read that? Verse 16. Go ahead. Verse 16. He, see, the power of death, the devil, he got that power. When, see, there was no death in the God. But when Adam sinned, and the, the, the devil had that power to get man eternal death. And so man was in bondage to that thing until he came and redeemed man from that. Now when man believes on him, he's redeemed from the sin, the, the sin that Adam brought in through listening to this devil. Go ahead and read. Verse 16, for verily he took not on him the nature of angels, but he took on him the seed of Abraham. See, angels are spirit beings. When he was born, he didn't take, he didn't take on a, he wasn't a spirit being. He was flesh and blood, just like Abraham. Go ahead. Wherefore in all these things it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren. His brethren. Who was his brother? Flesh and blood. Go ahead. That he might be merciful and faithful high priest in the things pertaining to God to make re re reconciliation for the sins of the people. How could he Go ahead, 18 and read it. For in that he himself has suffered being tempted, he is able to secure them that are tempted. Yeah. How can he be a merciful God if he don't know what man is going through. That's why when he was killing all things, he noticed that on his flesh, man. He was tempted in all kind of ways so he could have mercy on this man. He felt what you felt. He was tempted with everything. The lie, the cheat, the steal, the kill, the murder. To fornicate, commit adultery, to slander, backbite. All the things that man is driven by the flesh to do, whoremongers, adulterers, but without sin. Now, so, because it's not by his spirit. See, man, look at Matthew 22. See, so when man gets into the kingdom, if he makes it, he will rule in the kingdom. Matthew chapter 22, verse 20. Let me tell you a little bit about the story here. This is a parable. This is really was uh, uh, what you call a uh, a scenario. The Caesar Sadducees had, had, had came to Jesus, and they, and they don't believe in the resurrection. So they, they came with this high, high, hypocrisy. They said, well, if a, uh, read, stop reading verse 24, brother. The Gospel of Matthew, chapter 22, verse 24. I mean, yes. Saying, Master, saying, Master, Moses said, if a man die having no children, his brother shall marry his wife and raise up seed unto his brother. Now there were with us seven brethren, and the first, when he had married a wife, deceased and having no issue, left his wife unto his brother. Likewise, the second also, and the third unto the seventh. And last of all, the woman died also. Therefore, in this resurrection, whose wife shall be of the Whose wife shall she be of the seven? For they all had her. Yeah, for they all had her. She's a real man killer. So they said, whose wife she gonna be in the resurrection? Yeah. Cause they all had her and they all died, right? Yes. And then finally she died. Go ahead and read. Jesus answered and said unto them, Ye do out, not knowing the scripture nor the power of God. 
And that is where man is in trouble today. Not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of God. For in the resurrection, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels of God in heaven. Yes, sir. See, so when they and when the age to come, man is gonna be spirit beings as the angels of God. And they are the ones who will be overseen. See? The angels will still have their job to do, whatever it's gonna be at that time. But man will primarily be over mankind. Look at Isaiah chapter 30. <coughs> <laughs> the book of Isaiah, chapter 30, <laughs> verse 20 and 21. Begin at verse 20. This is when Israel is back in the land uh, and, and doing my living kingdom when the Lord is on earth, putting, all, all, putting down all rule and authority. Go ahead and read. Verse 20. And though the Lord give you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, Yet shall not thy teachers be removed into a corner anymore, but thy eyes shall see thy teachers. Yeah, because right now, your teachers are in the corners. And I ain't talking about no street corner where you see every false prophet either. He's talking about the four corners of the world where you can't get to them. Uh, uh, maybe a guy like me pops up every now and then, or other guys who know the true God. But yet they're hidden because you got all these false prophets and, and preachers and teachers and, and all this mess coming on the on the TV and you, and you and you don't know who your teacher is. See? So they, they no longer be in the corner, but your eyes gonna see your teacher. Go ahead and read. Verse twenty one. And thy ears shall hear a word behind thee, saying, This is the way. Walk ye in it when ye turn to the right hand and when ye turn to the left. Cause there'll be spirit beings. Because the angels are not going to be the one. See, the angels are the ones that speak in the ear now. This is in the kingdom. If you don't think so, look at verse uh, 26 and read. This is in the first resurrection. Then we say it's going to be like angels in the first resurrection. In the resurrection? Go down to verse 30 and read. Is that what I said? Go 26. 26 and read. The book of Isaiah, chapter 30, verse 26. Moreover, the light of the moon shall be as the light of the sun, and the light of the sun shall be sevenfold, as the light of seven days, in the day that the Lord binded up the breach of his people and healed the stroke of their wounds. Yeah. Look at that. The moon shall be as the light of the sun. Because remember, the glory of the Lord will be all over the place. And the, and the light of the sun is going to be seven times brighter than it was in the day the Lord come back. That's why the that's why uh, uh, what, 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 what the light will be like day, it says in Zechariah chapter 14. When he comes. And all them lights, them angels full of light, and his saints full of light. This whole place is gonna be lit up. And that's why they're gonna turn and think it's gonna be the aliens coming from from, from the from the from the heavens. <laughs> and start shooting. <laughs> And the Lord gonna wipe them out with the brightness of his coming, man. Yeah. And the sword of the spirit is gonna come out of his mouth. He's gonna speak and they're gonna be gone. That's right. That's it. Let's look at uh Jeremiah chapter 3. Just the book of Jeremiah, chapter 3. Let's give you a little something on the way of learning something here. Jeremiah chapter 3. <clears throat> Verse 14 and 15. Begin at verse 14. Turn, O black backsliding children, saith the Lord. For I am married unto you, and I, don't, I will take you one of a city and two of a family, and I will bring you to Zion. And ain't, ain't many gonna make it, people. That's why it says it's gonna be few to the end that find the path of life. He's gonna take one of a family? Read that again. Turn, O black backsliding children, saith the Lord. For I am married unto you. I will take you one of a city and two of a family, and I will bring you to Zion. And bring you bring to Zion. And I will give you pastors according to my heart, which shall feed you with the knowledge and understanding. Right. And he'll give you pastors in the kingdom people after his own mind that will feed you with knowledge and understanding. See? So 
But right now your teachers is here in corners. Your true pastors is here in corners, man. That know this word of God. That gave it, that he gave it to them. Man, if you got this thing, you're so blessed. It's hard to find. You better seek the Lord while he, while he may be found, people. He ain't everywhere like you think. See? Zechariah chapter 2. The book of Zechariah chapter 2. Praise ye the Lord. Verse 6. We get there, verse 6. Ho, ho, come forth and flee from the land of the north, said the Lord. For I have spread you abroad, abroad as the four winds whoa, of heaven. Whoa, 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 whoa. Back up. I got you at the wrong place. Zechariah chapter 4. Okay. Verse 6. I said 2. Zechariah 4, verse 6. The book of Zechariah chapter 4, verse 6. Then he else spake unto me, saying, this is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by night, might, nor by power, but by my spirit, said the Lord of hosts. Yeah. It ain't by the flesh's power or the flesh's might. It's by the spirit of the Lord. It's by the angels that he, that he, that he gets these things done. It ain't by man. Man can't will nothing to come to pass. Man gets some thoughts. He gave God, and God gave you a brain, my man. Think of it. He gave you hands to build up stuff. He gave you eyes to see. He gave man dominion over everything. But he ain't God. He's flesh. And the flesh is, is, is limited to the flesh. It ain't spirit. See? That's why your thoughts and his thoughts are not the same. His thoughts is higher than our thoughts. His ways is higher than our ways. So don't ever think you come up with some idea and it's better than the word of God. That's of the flesh. That's a lie. That's where traditions of men and doctrines of devils start. You better stick with this word and stick on the word and only the word of God. Well, I got a revelation. You can't find it nowhere in the Bible. <laughs> No way. And, and then you want to change something the word of God said. You ain't got to have no law. You ain't got to keep his commandments. Well, the angels keep his commandments. The reason you say that, you got knowledge of the book, but you don't have any understanding of it. With all your getting, you got to get understanding. I was there once. And out of his mouth come of understanding. And the angels is the one going to give it to you. And if you ain't right with the Lord, you ain't going to get it. You might get so far, but you run into that barrier because you won't keep his law. You won't keep his commandments. And so you'll get full of knowledge, but, but knowledge puff and puff people. See? You'll get full of it. But no understanding. Look at that. Look at uh Exodus chapter 23. The book of Exodus chapter 23. Verse, read one verse there. Verse 20. Give me verse 20. Behold, I send an angel before thee to keep thee in the way and to bring thee unto the place which I have prepared. Whoa, 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 whoa. He said, what? I sent an angel before thee to bring thee into a place. See, there you go. The angel's doing his work. But he said, the Lord is the one that led you out of the way. No, it was the angel. Verse 20 of 23, right? Go ahead and read. Keep Verse reading. Verse 21. Bewail him and obey his voice. Bewail who? The angel and obey his voice. Wait a minute. How do I? Because the angel is the one going to be giving you the instructions, people. Go ahead. Provoke him not, for he will not pardon your transgression, for my name is in him. Yeah. But he don't have the ability to forgive you. But if you don't 
do what you're supposed to, but you're going to receive the stroke of disobedience from him, though. Because every transgression and every disobedience, you're going to receive your, we're going to receive the just recompense and reward, and that's why we scattered to every place in the earth. Because we wouldn't obey his voice. Think about it. What verse we in, brother? Verse 27. Go ahead. But if thou shalt indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak. Well, obey his voice and do what? All that I speak. Remember I told you the protocol. The father and the son, they give it to the angel. The angel don't come up with nothing. He just does his will. See, man always wants to come up with something, some kind of interpretation. Just obey it, man. Quit putting your five senses on it. Go ahead. Verse 22. But if thou shalt indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak, then I will be an enemy unto thy enemies and an adversary unto thine adversaries. Right. Go ahead. For my angel shall go before thee and bring thee into, in unto the Amorites and the Hittites and Perizzites and the Canaanites and the Hivites and the Jebusites, and I will cut them off. That's right. And he said, don't go down and don't, don't go bow down to their gods and don't serve them, for they're going to be thorns in your side. See? Look at uh, Judges chapter 2. <clears throat> but you see the angels working there? Book of Judges, chapter 2. Start in verse. One. Beginning in verse one. Yeah, and the and the angel of the Lord came up from Gilgal to Bochim and said, I made you to go up out of Egypt and have brought you unto the land which I swear unto your fathers. I and I said I would never break my covenant with you. Wait a minute. This is the angel. See, the angel is the one who said, but who was he speaking for? Most high. The most high. Now he's come back to bring remembrance to what he spoke to him back there in Egypt when he brought him out. He don't speak his own words. That's right. He don't speak his own words. Go ahead. And ye shall make no league with the inhabitants of this land. Ye shall throw down their altars. But ye have not obeyed my voice. Why have ye done this? See there? You have not obeyed my voice. See? Now he's got to turn and put, put some hurt on you. For your disobedience. Go ahead. Wherefore I also said, I would not drive them out from before you, but they shall be as thorns in your sides, and their God shall be a snare to you. So they take their protection off of you, and everybody that's coming in and eat you up. Start serving all kind of gods. And you're going to start serving all kind of gods? Mm -hmm. And that's why we, we serve strange gods today. Gods that newly come up gods. The gods that we didn't know back then. There ain't no other god but the one true god, people. Yes. That you ever dealt with. There's two of them. You've never dealt with the Father. The Father don't deal with no flesh. We ain't gonna deal with the Father until the eighth day. Until there was a new heaven and a, and a, and a, and a, and a new earth. Where it dwells righteousness, and when the, when, the, when, the, when, the, when the new Jerusalem gonna come down, and then God gonna dwell with man. That's after the that's after the, the thousand year millennium kingdom, after the Lord has gotten rid of all the iniquity on the earth, and then the great white throne judgment. Then He gonna turn it over to the Father, and then the Son will be subject unto the Father Himself, and then there will be no more flesh. Everything that didn't make it be thrown in that lake of fire. That's that second death. A second resurrection, the one who made the first resurrection, the second death will have no power over them. But they'll be priests and kings of Lord. They'll be the teachers sat in the corner. They'll be the priests. They'll be the teachers. They'll be the guides. Oh, they'll have something to do. They'll be the builders of the new temple. So, but first we stop at bro. Verse 4, go ahead. Verse 4, and it came to pass when the angel of the Lord spake these words unto the children of Israel that the people lifted up their voice and wept. 
They always did that. It's all in trouble again. See, because they know, man. They know. They, they know what they did. Mm -hmm. You know what you did. I know what I did when you get caught. <laughs> yeah. Oh, like O.J. Simpson. <laughs> he wanted to weep. Mm -hmm. He was so happy to get out of there. Hey, he wasn't sorry that he did it. He was sorry that he got caught. He wasn't sorry that he did it. It was his own lust. He went in there and did that mess. Yeah. Go to uh, verse uh, 7 and read. Verse 7. And the people served the Lord all the days of Joshua and all the days of the elders that outlived Joshua, who had seen all the great works of the Lord that he did for Israel. So he ain't seen all the great works, but as soon as that man of God died, nobody just, he's just right. We broke off, man. <laughs> that, that's what Paul said. Wherefore, work out your own salvation. Uh -huh. Even as you've obeyed in my presence, much more my absence obey. Work out your own salvation with being trembling. Mm -hmm. See, everybody can act right in front of somebody. That's right. But what do you do behind? Mm -hmm. But see, the thing you don't know is that the Lord sees it all. You don't see it because the angels are watching me. Watching me. They're called the eyes of the Lord. There was angels everywhere. What verse we in my brother? Verse 8. No, read verse 11. Verse 11. And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord and served Baal. Go ahead. And they forsook the Lord God of their fathers, which brought them out of the land of Egypt, and followed other gods of the gods of the people that were round about them and bowed themselves unto them and provoked the Lord to anger. Now let me ask you something. Go ahead. And they forsook the Lord and served Baal and Astra. You know what Astra is? That's, that's the really breath of God. That's where you get Easter from. You, you know what Baal is? That's the sun god. That's where you get the sun god worship. That's where you get Sunday from. Hello. We were in the midst of Babylon, people. We're in the land of our enemies. And we've been serving their gods all these years. Has the nation changed gods? No, but my people have. Israel. Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 11 through 13. But we're not going to go there. I'll just, you can write it on there later. But look at Isaiah 63. See, the Bible, listen, the Bible and the words of the book is supernatural. Listen to me. It's spirit. It's supernatural. You deal with the supernatural world when you open this book. People don't realize it. They just think it's a nice little book to read. You better put up the spiritual eye. You gotta have eyes to see, talk about spiritual eyes, ears to hit, talk about your spiritual ears. But you never get it. This kind of stuff won't open up to you. Where we at now? Isaiah 63. Let me get there. We'll look at verse 9. Let me get there. <laughs> All right, go ahead and read. The book of Isaiah, chapter 63, verse 9. And Here all, it is. Go ahead. And all their affliction he was afflicted, and the angel of his presence saved them. In his love and in his pity he redeemed them, and he bared them and carried them all the days of old. The angel of his presence. Talk about when they came out of Egypt. He said he redeemed them. But it was the Lord who redeemed them. But the angel, the redeemer, he went bought him out of there. He said, I bought you out on the wings of an eagle. That was them angels, people. The cherub angels, they got a face like an eagle, a face like a man. See? They got wings with hands on them. They got eyes all over under the wings. You got a face like an ox. They got four faces. That was an 
name three of them. Three was a bear. I wasn't a bear. No. But, an eagle wing. Now, maybe I said that. Yeah. But anyway, we'll look at it. Um, verse, keep on reading. Verse 10. When they rebelled and mixed. His Holy Spirit. But whoa, 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 wait a minute. Back up a minute. Take a little slow, brother. But they rebelled. Did we, didn't we just see that in Judges? Why have you not obeyed my voice? That's rebellion. And they vexed his what? Holy his Spirit. Holy Spirit. The angel, people. Uh, the Holy Spirit is an angel. Spiritual eyes to see. Go ahead. But they rebelled and vexed his Holy Spirit. Therefore, he was turned to be their enemy, and he fought against them. Did he say he gonna turn on? He gonna turn on. And then he fought against them, didn't he? Once they start transgressing. Right. Every transgression, every just dis after disobedience, receive the just recompense and reward. You don't want this guy to fight against you. Yeah. You, know, you don't want to lose that hedge around you. He'll let every disease, every cancer, every every crook, every burrow come into your home, your house. He'll let everything come into your body. Every protection. I know I would really got this spot because these angels was around the around the mountain. And still I thank God. But they're everywhere in every place. And I think I might go ahead and do a series on this in a couple, next couple of weeks. I may do that, if the Lord willing. Because I can't teach it to y'all in one day. I got some stuff in my mind. But go ahead and read. Verse 11, then he remembered the days of old, Moses and his people saying, where is he that brought them up out of the sea with the shepherd of his flock? Where is he that put his Holy Spirit within him? Now wait a minute. Oh, see the angel was there. No, it wasn't that word within him. He's among them. The angel was among them. He was in the midst of them. Yeah, among them. He wasn't within them. Ain't no little spirit within you. The word that dwells, the spirit that dwells in you is the word of God. Jesus said, these words that I speak unto you, they are spirit, and they are truth. He said, eat of me, who have eat of me, shall have eternal life, and I, and I shall dwell in them, they shall be in me. And they scratched their head when the disciples heard that and said, no, I ain't what I'm talking about, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak, they are spirit, and they are life. That's what's going to give you eternal life. That's what's going to be in you when you eat my word. That's the spirit that's going to dwell in you. Who that? Okay. Verse 12, we're going to read that list. Go. Verse 12, that led them by the right hand of Moses within his glory zone. Dividing the water before them to make himself an everlasting name. Remember? They divide that red sea. By the angel. That's right. Not by the angel. Look at uh look at John 16. This Holy Spirit, I want to I want to show you this, who he is. We'll start at verse 7. The book of John, chapter 16. Beginning at verse 7. Read. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is it is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. I will send him unto you. Because when he was with him, he was God. But now he's leaving, he got to send the comforter back. Go down to verse 12 and read. Verse 12. How be it? When he, the spirit of truth, has come, he would guide you the into The spirit of truth is the angel of truth. This is that Holy Spirit. Go ahead. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he would guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whosoever he shall hear, 
that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. That's the one who will do them with us. But he's an angel. Okay. He, he's a spirit. He's the Holy Spirit. And he's got other spirits that he can deal with us. They gotta rank and file. But he shall speak of things to come. He will guide us. In other, that's why I, when I'm starting this thing off, it's the Spirit of God that guides this thing. The protocol, man. Listen to this. The Father gives it to the Son. The Son gives it to the angel. The angel gives it to the servant. He don't give it to the organization. That's the protocol. Now, the organization may have a protocol, but it's going to quench the Spirit. It's going to question the spirit because you got to go through all these layers. And it seems so right because organizations do have protocols. But God never called an organization. You know where he got the organization from? Wrong. The Roman Catholic organization. And you copy it. That's where you got the first church building from. The Roman Catholic organization. The church is not a building. You are the church. If you had go to Paul and said, let us go to church, he'd look at you like you're crazy. You mean let's go to church? She said, he'll tell you, you are the church. And wherever you gather, that is the church. Where two or three gather in my name, there I am. He said, I'll be a little sanctuary, but where all where am I driven you? You gotta have organizations so you can keep that money. <laughs> How else you gonna keep it if you're gonna have a big organization? You gotta keep calling for more money and more money and more money. Yes. Come on. Keep building these big old buildings. And now you got your own kingdom and you reigning over it. Come on, we. And so when you reign, now it ain't no longer the Lord's church, it's your church. And so your protocol is set up. Yes. So I got to deal with you and what you and only you. That's right. And who you have set up between God, the man, and the angel. You got all this protocol set in between them. Mm -hmm. All of it. Yeah. yeah, you're getting some things done. But all the priests of the Lord are just sitting there waiting for their their job to be told. Mm -hmm. But how the Spirit going to get to you when you're waiting for the protocol man to, to tell you you got something? <laughs> to tell you what to do. I did it for years, people. Come on, I waited till and waited and waited for the protocol man. And when I kept breaking the protocol, they kept getting mad at me. Because <sighs> I'd go out and do what the Lord told me to do. Well, how can the Lord be working in me, see? Well, how can the Lord work in you? What do you mean he the Lord told you? Well, you see what I'm saying? But anyway, you have to figure that out. That's what the books say. I don't care what nobody else say. Again, there it is. The flesh going to come up and change it. You read it in the book. Revelations 1, 1 through 3. Go back and read it. Keep it in your mind and your heart. Now you got to be in, you you got to be under tutors and governors until the time appointed. See? But that's why John the Baptist said to his disciples, and they was he didn't be under him. He said they would say, "Hey John, you know you who baptized him? He baptized him in Jordan." Paul, he told him, "Hey, I must decrease so he can increase, for he received the word of God not by measure." See, John only had a measure. Every man got a measure. Every man got a measure. And then, and we all got to partake each other's measure to get the full measure. But Jesus only the got the whole thing, man. So, so man gets in the way of your measure. Organization or protocols. But you don't want to jump out of here if you don't know what you're doing. Okay. Where we at, brother? Let's keep on our side. Let's run it off.
Verse where? Just read 13. Read, read verse 14. Verse 14, he shall glorify me, for he shall receive a mind and shall show it unto you. All things that the Father hath are mine. Therefore, say that, that he shall take a mind and shall show it unto you. Yeah, so he going to see it. That's how it works. But he, he's the angel. He's the Holy Spirit. Uh, for a reason. Read 14, 26. John 14, 26. The book of the Gospel of John, chapter 14, verse 26. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit. See there, the Comforter is the Holy Spirit. Go ahead. Whom the Father was sent in my name. See, that's when he sent the angel back there, obey his voice, because my name is what? In him. So he is sent in the name of Jesus. That's why you get when you when you talk about getting baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, those are titles. You've got to get baptized in the name of Yahshua, the Messiah, Jesus the Christ, Jesus of Nazareth. You don't get baptized. You ain't getting no true baptism when you get the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. That's another deception. There's only one name when man not be saved. Think about it. So his name is in him. He sit in his name. Jesus came in his name, but he inherited the name of the Father. There's no name above the Father's name. That the name of Jesus every now and name should bow. Now, let's go to Psalms 104. Praise you the Lord. This is exciting stuff, people. This is supernatural stuff you hear. You can't get, you can't get turned away from this, huh? Okay, how busy you get? I don't care how much the world gives you money. Whatever you're doing, keep God first, man. Because then all these things be added to you, and, and they'll be added unto you. You ain't got to go around trying to beat every door down for it. Psalms 104. Let's look at these angels again. Go ahead, verse 4, I read. The book of Psalms, chapter 104, verse 3, read. Begin at verse 3. Who led the beams of his chambers in the waters, who maketh the clouds of his chariots. Who, who, who maketh clouds his chariots. Who walketh upon the wings of the wind. Yeah, that's the wings of spirit. The same word for spirit. See? Because he rides them chariots. Well, I'm sure it's laid on that today. Go ahead. Who maketh his angel spirits, his ministers, they flame and fire. Uh -huh. Who laid the foundation of the earth, that it should not be removed forever. Who laid the foundation of the earth? The angels laid the foundation on earth, people. Those ministry spirits. The context. Go ahead. Verse 6. Thou covers it, covers it with the deep as with a garment. The water stood above the mountain. At thy rebuke that they fled, at the voice of thy, thy thunder they hasted away. That was the angels, man. Go ahead. They go up by the mountains. They go down by the valleys unto the place which thou hast found for them. And you got to go back and listen to that teaching I gave on the three heavens. Because <coughs> the first heaven of earth was not created uh, without form and void. That, that word was, but it's the word became in the Hebrew. It became without form and void between Genesis 1 1 and Genesis 2 1 2. You get millions of years in there, but after that, he was re he was remaking the earth by the angels. Go ahead. Thou hast said he bound that they may not pass over. That happened on the third day when he, when he, when he told the, the seas to go up on the dry land, and, 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 and now they can never you know, the, the, the seas get all get bound. You, you look at it and see. Go ahead. Thou hast said he bound that they may not pass over, that they turn not again to cover the earth. Not, this is talking about never covering the earth because the earth was in the water above the water. 2 Peter chapter 3. You go read that, verses 1 through 6. That was in the beginning of creation, not Noah's day. 
What verse we have now? Verse 10. Now go to verse 19. Verse 19. He appointed the moon for season, the sun knoweth his glory going down. Uh, verse 29. Verse 29. Thou hidest thy face, they are troubled. God takes away their breath, they die and return to their death. Talking about Adam. This, 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 this psalm here talking about the beginning of the creation. It's all the things that happened at the beginning when he was renewing the earth. Look at verse 30. And it's in chronological order. Verse 30. Well, some of it is. Now, go ahead. Thou sendest forth thy spirit, they are created, and thou renewest the face of the earth. That's what he was reading. Because the angel of the Lord moved across the face of the deep, the spirit of the Lord. See? It was, he, he, and he saw what was going on, what was happening. He was, he was looking at all the, the just like a, a hurricane comes to destroy a city, and they would come over and look at the damage in the elk helicopter. And so the Lord began working them, let that be light, first thing. Second, they separate the firmness between the firm the water. Matter of fact, we'll go back and look at a little bit of But let's go to Psalms. Let's go to Psalms. Genesis chapter 2. Genesis chapter 1, real quick. 1. What's my God? Yeah, Genesis, Genesis 1 1. The book of Genesis, chapter 1, beginning at verse 1. Read. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the earth was, the earth became without form and void. That word was is the word for became. I'm not going to go right now and teach on all this right now. Because uh, we did it. Look up that teaching, that lesson. We did it a few weeks ago. The third, the three heavens. Now, go ahead and read first verse two. And the spirit of God moved upon the face of the water. That was when that angel of the Lord moved upon the face of the deep. See, and they began renewing the face of the earth. Let there be light here. Let there be. Here. And then until they got down to man, Genesis chapter two, verse seven. This is chapter 2, verse 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. That was that angel down there forming man. See? So the angel formed the man. He said, that was created. See, the angel did the work. Look at Psalm 78. Psalm chapter 78. Start in verse verse 40. Begin at, at verse 40. How oft did they provoke him in the wilderness and grieve him in the desert? Yea, they turned back and tempted God and lived the Holy One of Israel. They remember not his hand nor the day when he delivered them from the enemy. How he had broke his signs in Egypt and his wonders in the field of Zoom. Now wait a minute. Who was doing that? The angels was doing that. Because the angels went brought him out of Egypt, remember? And, and brought him into the wilderness. They were led by, we read that in Isaiah. These are angels doing this work. Now, go down to verse 49 and read. Verse 49. He cast upon them the fierceness of his anger, wrath, and indignation, and troubled them by sending evil angels among them. There it is. He sent evil angels among them, Pharaoh, to, to do his work. To do all that killing. Go ahead. He made a way to his anger. He spared not their souls from death, but gave their life over to the pest. We told you he'll take that take the protection off of you, and that disease will come right in and get you. Verse 52, read. Verse 52. But made his own people to go forth like sheep and guide them in the wilderness like a flock. Well, who guided them, brother? The angel, the spirit, the Holy Spirit, just like he guided us today. Now, let's go to uh, 
Let's go to Revelation chapter 5 real quick. Revelation chapter 5. We'll get through this. Revelation 5, verse 6. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne, and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders, stood a lamb as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. Right, that's them seven spirits, them seven angels sent forth into all the earth. Let's go look who these seven spirits are. Look at, uh, let's see, let me read something. Let me show where they had the eyes. Seven horns, seven eyes. Look at verse. Uh, go ahead to Zechariah 4. They had time for it. Zechariah 4. The book of Zechariah, chapter 4. Verse 1. Begin at verse 1. And the angel that talked with me came again and walked. Wake me as a man that is waking out of his sleep. See there? Here it is. Still dealing with the angel, dealing with man. He came and woke him because he was showing him a vision. Go down to verse 8 and read. Verse I'm not, 8. I'm not going to read all this to you, but go down to verse 8 and read. Verse 8. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, The hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this house. His hands shall also finish it. And thou shalt know that the Lord of hosts have sent me unto you. He shall finish it in the kingdom when the Lord come back. Zerubbabel, this is talking about the first resurrection we're going to finish. Go ahead. For who have despised the day of small things? For they shall rejoice and shall see the plummet in the hand of Zerubbabel with those seven. They are the eyes of the Lord which run to and fro through the whole earth. That's them seven spirits before that we just read about. In Revelation chapter 4, they call the eyes of the Lord. Remember, I told you about the eyes of the Lord, those are seven angels. Let's look at uh, Deuteronomy chapter 11. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 11. Verse. Verse 12. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 11, beginning at verse 12. And a land which the Lord thy God cared for, the eyes of the Lord thy God are always upon it for the beginning of the year, even unto the end of the year. That's the truth. That's the angels. Look at, look at uh, first, first uh, Kings, chapter 14. They were called the eyes of the Lord. I didn't think how. I don't know how much help. I didn't think how. First Kings 14, verse 8. The book of First Kings, chapter 14, verse 8. And rent the kingdom away from the house of David, and gave it thee, and yet thou hast not been as my servant David, who kept my commandments, and who followed thee with all his heart, to do that only which was right in my eyes. Yeah, wait a minute, his eyes. Before the angels, people. He did, he did that was right. And his sight is before the angels. Look at chapter 16, verse 25. The book of uh, 1 Kings, chapter 16, verse 5. Now I can show you many more, but I'm just doing this for time's sake. Go ahead. Because David did that which was right in the eyes of the Lord and turned not aside from any th anything that he commanded him all the days of his life, save only in the matter of Uriah the Hittite. Right. See, the angel of the Lord, they recorded all that, man. See, that's why that's why Noah found grace in the in the in the sight of the Lord. In the, in the, see, that's the angels. You can find grace in, in their eyes too. I know I have. I know this brother has. I know my wife and my family have, and I know y'all friends. But you got to keep it all the way to the end, man. <clears throat> you gotta keep the law all the way to the end if you want these angels to keep this grace on. Because uh, David did that was right in the sight of the Lord. Proverbs 15. The book of Proverbs, chapter 15. Read verse 3. 
Verse 3. The eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil in the good. Yeah. See, I keep saying, Jesus been there, but he can't be. It's the eyes of the Lord. They're running to and fro through the earth, man. Angels everywhere. And when they write it down, it don't change. That's why every man got to give account before him. You gonna open them books that was written. Ecclesiastes chapter 5. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 5. Start in verse. Let me get there. Verse 5. Verse 5. Start at verse 4. Read. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 5, beginning at verse 4. When thou vows a vow to God, defer not to pay it. For he hath no pleasure in fools, pay that which thou hast vowed. Better is that thou shouldest not vow, than thou shouldest vow and not pay. Go ahead. Suffer not thy mouth to cause thy flesh to sin, neither say thou before the angel that it was an error. Wherefore should God be angry at thy voice and destroy the works of thy hands? Yes, sir. But the angel. He's right there with you when you go to Motel 6 with that boy's wife. He's right there with you when you when you, when you, when you, when you when you're in church and you steal the money out of the pan. Come on with him. Alright? He's right there with you when you when you said you're gonna you're gonna do something and you don't do it for God. He's writing it down. He's right there with you. Once you leave the building, you can't you, you, you go right back to your old life. The angels is right there recording. And they ain't going to change, man. Look at uh, 1 Peter chapter 3. i got two more verses after that. The book of 1 Peter chapter 3. Verse 10 through 12. Go ahead and read. Begin at verse 10. For he that will love. Hold on. Look at the people chat. 1 Peter chapter 3. Verse 10. We got folks out there. Go ahead and read. For he that would love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips that they speak no God. Go ahead. Let him eschew evil and do good. Let him speak peace and ensue it. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayers. But the face of the Lord is, is them that do evil. Yes, sir. See that? That's them angels. Acts chapter 7. Then we'll go back to chapter 7. Verse 51. Begin at verse 51. Ye stiff neck and uncircumcised in heart and ears, ye do always resist the Holy Spirit as your fathers did, so do ye. Now we know that Holy Spirit was an angel back then. An old man. Go ahead. Which of the prophets have not your father persecuted, and they have slain them which show before of the coming of the just one, of whom ye have been now the betrayers and murderers? Who have received the law by the disposition of angels and have not kept it. How did they receive the Torah? By the disposition. The law? By what? By the disposition of angels, man. The angels are the ones that gave us the word of God. See? Daniel chapter 5. The book of Daniel chapter 5. And this is going to be the last last verse I'm going to read. I'm just, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to probably share on this. Next week, that's why I want to cover this. This is when this is when Belshazzar was drinking out of the cups of the silver out of the temple and worshiping the gods of gold. And that hand appeared unto them. Go ahead and read verse five. Read one verse. The book of Daniel, chapter five, verse five. In the same hour came four fingers of a man's hand and rolled over against the candlestick upon the plaster of the wall of the king's palace. And the king saw the part of the hand that wrote. Then the king's countenance was changed, and his thoughts troubled him, so that the joints of his loins were loose, and his knees smoked one against another. The king cried aloud to bring in the astrologers, the Chaldeans, and the soothsayers. And the king spake and said to the wise men of Babylon, Whosoever shall read this writing and show me the interpretation thereof shall be clothed with God. Well, we know they called him uh, uh, Daniel and the boy the interpreter. And said, you have been found, you have been weighed in the balances, and you have been found lacking. See, that's how our work is going to be weighed in the balance. 
But that hand that wrote that thing on the wall, that was an angel. Remember, they got the they got the wings, they got they got the man's hands under the wings. That's how he just showed part of himself. And he wrote that on the on the board. Scared that man to death. That man died that night, same night. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I hope somebody got some of that. Seriously, supernatural book. Uh, go over these things. Make it your own. And continue to subscribe and tell your friends about it. We'd like to have other folks learn this stuff and get a part of it. Thank you so much from outside the camp ministries. Praise ye the Lord.